Hey guys, it's Adam K Swimming Bird, and welcome to ARMS on the Switch. Now I have to start by saying that this product was provided by Nintendo. They were very kind and provided an early copy for me to try out. So that's what we're gonna show today. A bunch of matches and modes, and I wanna talk about my thoughts on the game, especially the different control schemes. I have played a lot so far. I have the sore biceps to show for it. And I wanna discuss motion controls versus traditional controls to help you guys maybe pick the control scheme that will be right for you. So before we get into that, we got a quick hoops match here where I'm using one of Twintel's alternate costumes where she's blonde. Now if you want to select alternate costumes, all you have to do is hover over the character you want to choose, click in the left stick, and then push it in a direction before you select your character. There are three extra skins with the fourth one up being the default, so they could probably add in another one to that. So controls. Let's talk about that while I dunk on this ninja here. So motion controls, I feel like are pretty intuitive and give you a lot of precision on your punches, but my recommendation for you guys, if you're trying out the game in the test punch or when it comes out, is to try out the traditional controls with the control stick while you are learning at least, because I feel like on the surface, this game might look a little complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on. We're about to go into a really fun team match where there's a lot of arms flying back and forth, so it might seem overwhelming. And that is why mostly I recommend the traditional controls because when you're moving around with the control stick, you're probably more used to that than trying to tilt the Joy-Cons in a direction to move. And you can use that while you're learning to get a feel for the game and just get the systems down, the punching, the dashing, grabbing, guarding, jumping, all the stuff that you're gonna need to know and be able to do quickly in the midst of these high intensity frantic matches. So the thing that I wanna mention though with motion controls, even though it might seem a little more complicated or tougher to learn overall, I recommend those because with traditional controls, when you're punching, you actually have to tilt the movement stick to aim your punches. You can angle them still with traditional controls, but you have a harder time moving around and punching in different directions than you would with motion controls, most likely because motion controls, you can still be moving in different directions, as you can see here, and punch in others and cover a lot more ground. So I think ultimately it's gonna be up to the player. We're probably gonna see a lot of competitive players overall using both styles, but I have been doing a ton of motion controls. That is why, you know, I'm I'm getting ripped biceps, not really, but I am burning a lot of calories playing. It's kind of weird that it does actually give you some exercise, but I can see people who don't want to do that or don't want to uh, have sore arms sticking with traditional controls. So I like that there's that option. It's pretty easy to switch between the two as well because, you know, both of them work out well enough and I don't think it's too confusing to jump between them. But yeah, that is my, uh, my thoughts on the controls. So I say try traditional, move on to motion controls. Don't brush them off as a gimmick because they do offer a ton of precision. So that was a very close match. It came down to the rush, the special attack. We're gonna see my first rank match here. This is the final round of my first time playing ranked mode online using bite and bark. But you have the rush special attacks. You really have to choose the right time to use them because they can pretty easily be blocked. You tilt in the Joy-Con slightly to guard, which can be pretty quick, or click the left control stick on a traditional controller. And once you get used to that, most players, and especially the computer, the computer can be very tough at higher difficulties in this game, they will be able to block that rush if you are not timing it at the right time. But when your opponent is punching, they're vulnerable because they cannot get their arms back fast enough, most likely, to be able to guard and block that rush attack. Same with grabs, you really gotta time those right. They do a lot of damage for some characters, especially like Master Mummy, he's very grab heavy. He does 200 damage per grab, the same as those big firebomb items. So really timing, all this stuff is very key. It has a lot of similarities to real boxing. And this is the evolution of Punch Out and that sort of game where, you know, we got all these different characters from all over the world and it's kind of uh, a more modern Nintendo take on Punch-Out, I feel like. We don't have Soda Popinski, but we have Twintel from, uh, from France and stuff like that. But, so here is party mode. I just did a ranked match and got a little bit of uh, points towards my rank. I'm still Snail at this point, which is the first rank. It goes Snail, Lollipop, Pinwheel. There's a bunch of names that have to do with the swirls of the, uh, the arms player's eyes. When you have arms that are stretchy, you get those strange little swirling eyes. But yeah, playing party mode, 
it is a best of one match, so it is a little bit more just kind of a quick way to jump in and have fun and earn coins to help you unlock arms and things like that. Ranked mode, there are no items. It is best of two, and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, whereas party, party mode, you can get a bunch of different things like team battles and a free-for-all. You're gonna see a three-person match at the end here where everyone is for themselves, and you do have to deal with items like the HP and rush juice that can boost your hit points and your special meter, as well as those bombs. There is a shock bomb that will break your opponent's arms so you can grab them very easily or just, you know, wallop them. And the firebomb, which does 200, which is a fifth of your life meter that can be very deadly. So you gotta be careful with the items on, but they play into the strategy. I don't think it's like Mario Kart where the items are gonna be very cheap feeling at times. Most of the time, the items, they are placed down between you two. It's a lot of strategy trying to make sure your opponent doesn't get to them before you do. Of the three new characters, Bite and Bark are the ones that I really gravitated towards. I'm really enjoying playing as them now that I've got more of the strategy down of how to jump and uh, and make full use of Bark's punches and stuff like that. But Kid Cobra has been the most surprising. I do like Twintel as well. I was able to, uh, to win that last match with her, but Kid Cobra, he seems like he's got a lot going for him. Just on terms of uh, what characters I've seen played effectively and have done well early on, between the you know different YouTubers and press that have played the game, it looks like Ribbon Girl, Twintel, and uh, and Kid Cobra especially seem to be ones that get a lot of play. Min Min as well, and do really well. I see tons of Ribbon Girl, so I have a feeling she might be the Diddy of this game to make a Smash Brothers comparison. We might see some balance patches pretty soon. The developers are paying attention during the test punches and stuff. But Kid Cobra, I really like him. He has the best or quickest jump in the game. Ribbon Girl probably has the best jump because she can jump multiple times and Chantel is really good with her aura being able to hang in the air. But Kid Cobra has a really good jump and his big weakness is just the fact that he is really slow on the ground. He can't dash very far. But if you have a charge, which is done by just holding down your jump, holding your guard or holding your dash, you can see when my arms glow, I have a charge. You want to use that a lot. That's something that I think when you first start out, most players don't realize to do. When you have that as Kid Cobra, you can actually duck and dive around with those dashes that I did a couple times there, especially in that team match. I was kind of zipping under arms and stuff like that. So very effective use and makes up for his one big weakness. I think the only other thing is that he can be hit a little easier because he has those giant arms, but it also means that arm girth stat, which Master Mummy, I think has a pretty good amount of as well. It'll make sure that you're not able to break their arms as easily, but as you can see, with uh, Bite and Bark here, I'm using his homing missile, the Seeky. It has an electric shock, and I just bring Master Mummy in for a big old hug, and he get blasted by that firebomb. Just, you know, a sweet hug of death. He might have already been dead because he's a mummy, but... But anyways, yeah, you... <laughs> lots of strategy and timing stuff and using electricity to break your opponent's arms temporarily when those exclamation marks show up. That is a great way to get in a grab or have your robotic dog buddy just punch him right in the face. So this is a three for all or free for all match with three players and you can get ganged up on. So it is uh, a little tough to make sure you're not overwhelmed in these, but this is party mode. So it is more for fun. If you tap up on the left control pad, that is how you change targets in this mode. Something I know a lot of players might not have realized immediately with these types of matches like team matches. It is kind of slow to change targets. I think that's part of the strategy. So you got to get used to it when you're guarding or getting up from a fall. That's one of the better times to do it because you have more time to be able to swap between people. Guarding is uh, is going to be a little tricky, I think, for a lot of players early on. So make sure you practice that. Dashing is what I usually do or jumping to get out of the way. But guarding is very effective and it does charge your arms. So do not neglect to use that, especially against rush attacks, but don't do it too much because you can get thrown so easily, like so, if you're guarding a lot. So there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna have more ARMS previews, a couple of streams with the full game, as well as a bunch of streams with the test punch. So please uh, check those out if you haven't already. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will try to get to them. I can't talk about every part of the game until it is out, but I am very excited for this. It feels like a, uh, the perfect game for me because I'm really a big fan of, uh, of boxing and punch out and stuff like that but this does feel more like an evolution of that idea with a more unique kind of hook to it with the stretchy arms so I'm very excited for the full release of arms here please leave a like if you enjoyed this maybe subscribe if you haven't and I will see you soon 
for more arms and other videos on the way. Thanks for watching again. Goodbye.